probably eh, close to a half mile wide. It was wider coming up through. Right, now I'm going to have to do this while I talk. I'm shutting my engine off. We finally got up. We're going to float down. <clears throat> this island is probably about two and a half, three miles long. This is the Virginia shoreline. Maryland does own the river all the way across. But we're coming through some real shallows here. Bobby's down there. He's already been through. We're going to pull our motor up and just kind of hopefully drift through. Our anchor up front's ready. Um, I've got a pole here if I need it, and I'm going to have a paddle in my hand, of course. And we'll see if we can just drift right through here. All right, this is where we're going to go through, right up here. We'll probably go through the wrong side, but everything's up, so we'll get right through it. You can see how shallow it's getting here. This is probably a foot and a half. You can see the gravel on the bottom. It's still got a lot of silt laying on it because we had a big heavy rain a couple weeks ago. Uh, summertime when this silt washes away. It's just crystal clear. The water's crystal clear today, almost. It makes a little harder fishing. Uh, you got to sneak up on them a little bit. They can see you coming too. They obviously know something's going on. Now, last time I was out here with Bobby a month or so ago, the water you can see on the shoreline it was probably four to six feet deeper. Uh, this was all brand. I've never been on this stretch of river before, and it certainly looks totally different to me today. And that's also. Uh, the Potomac River, but any river, you have to be so careful of the water heights and be, you know, enjoy the rivers, but really, you know, pay attention to what's going on around you. Check the markings at the ramp is always a good indication. Most public state park type ramps have some kind of, uh, they do it differently sometimes, but they also, they post a sign uh, explaining their system. So check that, and it, it's uh, very simple, but very useful information. If the river was supposed to rise two or four feet this afternoon, we wouldn't be out here. So do check on info and know the waters you're on just for safety. Okay, we went right through that and we didn't scrape or anything. But here we are. This is a piece of the river that not too many people know about. I mean, here you are in a beautiful Potomac. People look at this as a creek. It ain't a creek. It's a part of the river that comes down to here, cuts around a bend. It encompasses about, about 150 acre sod farm over here. A little bit later on in the show, you're going to see that we're going into the bridge where the tractors come over and they do the sod farm. And they have legal immigrants that farm that sod over there. I kind of like that. When we get around here, we're going to go probably about another 40 yards. There's a hole there. Uh, the average water depth right now is running probably about two to three feet. Right around that bend, we're going to pick up a, about a four foot, five foot hose. We're about to sit down degrees How much of the water? 71 degrees. 71 degrees. That's what we're looking for. We're looking at anything from 70 to 72 degrees. Out in the main river out there, we're about 69. We're looking for 70, 71, 72. Them big old fat cats are coming here ready to spawn. That's what we're looking for. Got a little bit of strong current work here. Trying to get a little company out there. Out in the main river. About to scare them all a little bit. They see professionals in here. They stay well. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to want to thank one of our major sponsors, at BWB, Buffalo Wings and Beer. Uh, I can't say enough about those guys. Best wings in town, uh, just ask anybody. Well, so I got a little break of the action here. You know what? One thing that always amazes me, Bino, this is an amazing turnaround as far as an environmental standpoint. This Potomac River probably about 15 years ago is considered like love point. It's like one of the worst rivers on the East Coast as far as pollution stuff goes. You couldn't eat the fish because I catch a disease and things of that nature. This river is completely turned around. The ecosystem now, we have the bald eagles back, we got the blue heron here, we got the wood ducks here that are thriving real well. And now you can eat the catfish, the bass that come back. It's just an amazing turnaround. Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on. Hear a little bell. That's what we like. Sometimes they like to just get a little taste of it, walk away from it, and then back to it. Oh, <laughs> I'm
All right, what we're doing now, Bob's drifted down below us. We haven't had a whole lot of good luck, but it's the changeover time of the day, too. It isn't quite dinner time yet, but it's coming. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna head on down here. Bobby's already set up on the next hole. I haven't heard any bells ringing or Kentucky boys screaming yet. But uh, we're on the way down there, we're gonna set up and try her again. But some day, they just want you to crank it in as fast as you can and they'll slam it. And other days, it's slow. So you just gotta kinda figure them out. Some days they don't want a lizard or whatever you are and they just don't want it. And we certainly don't have these figured out yet, but we will. You know that. Yeah, we'll get her down. Always do. It's all about pattern. Could it be prettier? First day we came out, out here, steady downport all day. Did we you go wanted out? to take the boat out. Did we go out? Yes, sir, we did. Steady down for all day. Beautiful day. If there's not a fish right there, we'll move. <laughs> I believe you. No, time move. Just what y'all suspected was right. Come back to where the fish were this morning. Here they are this evening. 